Hey guys, it is time for the buzzword for today. And tomorrow is a very special day around our house because tomorrow we'll be thanking the Lord for the 35 years that he has graciously given to me to live and to enjoy this life and to serve him with muscular dystrophy. The life expectancy is late teens to early 20s. So any time beyond that threshold that has been set is, is a great uh, thing that is for great cause of rejoicing. And I'm glad to say that for 16 of those 35 years, I have been serving the Lord Jesus and building his kingdom and seeking to bring other people into his kingdom so that they can experience the hope and the joy and the love and the forgiveness that is found only in Christ. So what makes a man or woman truly blessed of God? We're going to look at that in Psalm chapter 1 and verses 1 through 6. Psalm chapter 1 is one of the many psalms contained in the book of Psalms. And the book of Psalms were basically the hymn book for the Hebrew people. About 73 of these psalms were written exclusively by David. Other writers have written psalms as well. Solomon and Moses being a few others that have written songs for the book of Psalms. And most of them were penned to be sang in worship and used in the worship service in the, the temple in the Old Testament. So they're packed full of praises to God and uh, prayers to the Lord and just petitions and, and agonizing things that people went through because many of the Psalms illustrate emotional distress that David was going through or many of the other people were going through and the enemies that surrounded them. So the book of Psalms is a great book to focus on when you're struggling and there's great nuggets of wisdom and truth in there. Now Psalm chapter 1 is considered to be a wisdom psalm because there's not much about praising to the Lord uh, in this psalm, but there's a lot of wisdom about uh, the blessedness of those who follow the ways of the Lord. So basically, the wisdom literature is the wisdom of living it out is your praise to the Lord. So let's look at that. We're going to look at the first three verses today, and then Monday we'll look at uh, the other three. So the blessedness of the one that follows the Lord. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. So the blessed man or woman knows how to discern between good advice and bad advice. There's a lot of advice being given in our world today. Lots of philosophies, lots of political ideologies, lots of tidbits to to help you with this or that and we need to be able to discern between good godly counsel and then counsel that is not godly and is not good and should be avoided so avoiding the counsel that goes against god's word and we need to be careful there's a lot being said that goes directly against the bible today and people are afraid to to make that stand, to say, wait a minute, that's not the way to live. But the truly blessed man is the one who can discern this good advice versus the ungodly advice, and he's able to get away from it and to live out the good advice. He's also able to uh, learn who he should associate with. He doesn't stand in the way of sinners. He doesn't behave himself in the way that the sinners do. And let me, let me distinguish here. We're not saying that the sinners are evil people, stay away from them, and, and we are the right people, hang out with us. No, but sinners are those that basically are not taking care of their sin. They sin and they don't care. They sin, but they don't want a savior, and they don't need forgiveness. And some people even say they don't need forgiveness. 
And, and that right there is bad counsel and bad advice. So don't walk in that counsel. And don't walk the way that the, the sinners that don't want to get their sin right behave. Nor sit in to see the scoffers. Scoffers are those that are constantly mocking your faith constantly mocking your God and you tried to reason with them but they don't listen the truly blessed man is the one who can discern the good advice discern the company he keeps and discern between a scoffer who could still be reached for Christ and a scoffer who is bringing him down so what is the deciding factor here the deciding factor is, is this advice, is this relationship, is this person affecting my relationship with God in my spiritual walk? And if it is, that is a person or a philosophy you need to avoid. Moving on. But what makes a man or woman blessed? Yes, we see that that. Knowing those three things, that, that's good. But there's also a, another thing to it. His delight, what brings him joyous pleasure, is the law of the Lord. In high school, one of my friends, uh, David Johnson, or Lee Johnson, excuse me. There was Lee and there's Chris. Chris Johnson, there you go. One of the Johnsons. But Chris Johnson, he knew all of the batting averages of the professional baseball players. It was just remarkable how he knew that. He knew that because he played ba baseball. He knew that because he, it was a delight to him. It was something he loved to do. And our delight should be God's law, God's word, not just the Ten Commandments, not just the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, but everything that God has said in his word. If that is your delight, and if you meditate on that day and night, you will be blessed. I like what the Apologetic Study Bible says about meditation. It says, meditation involves studying the passage of scripture, memorizing it, praying about it, and exhorting yourself to follow it. A lot of people get mixed up and they just read the Bible. Mm, that's good, but you need to think about it. You need to study it deeper. And you need to exhort yourself to live it. We do gr a great job exhorting other people to live God's word, right? Come on, get, get, get real with me. We love to exhort other people to do it. But do you ever exhort yourself to live God's word? That is the true question. And we need to do that. And the truly blessed man does that. And what is the result? Look at this. He meditates day and night, but verse three, he is like a tree. I love this simile. Planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season. Notice it yields its fruit in its season. So it doesn't mean you're going to have success spiritually right away. But it takes time and it's season. And its leaf does not wither. And all that he does, he prospers. I love this, this imagery here. In the Middle East, the agriculture setting, a lot of times they would have these canals that would uh, be extensions from different rivers that would water their agricultural land that they needed and it's also been said that in Egypt they would have uh, channels from the Nile into various areas in Egypt that would water these different places because water in the Middle Eastern culture was a source of life and it still is today try to go without water you will die so the picture here is that the blessed man who meditates on God's word and who avoids the things mentioned in verse 1 is like a properly irrigated tree that just sucks that life from the water. And that life from the water just 
permeates within the, the roots of the tree and it produces green leaves and beautiful fruit, tasty fruit, and a beautiful life. So let me say to you guys today, do you want to be a truly blessed man or woman? Learn to discern those three things. Learn to delight and meditate on God's word. And in so doing, you will be like this tree that is just in a perfect place to grow and produce fruit. And that is the truly blessed life. And that is what has blessed my life for the last 16 years. And it can be a blessing to you. Monday, we're going to look at the other three verses. Until then, take care of yourself and have a great weekend. God bless.